Well, my impression of the students who are doing creative writing and doing English is that they seem really down to earth. I mean, a lot of the time, students who are doing creative writing tend to be uh, quite precious about their experience as writers and want to be quite separate from the English department, want to be a little bit separate from the university. You know, it's a, it's a bit like athletes sometimes are. You know, you're on the team, you're on the university team, and you kind of all stick together. But uh, these students seem pretty down to earth. They seem to be doing um, work across a range of disciplines, which is also quite unusual. They're doing screenplays, they're doing theatre, they're doing autobiography, they're doing fiction, they're doing poetry. And they seem to be moving quite fluidly between them all, rather than just saying, I'm a poet or I'm a fiction writer. So it basically seemed quite healthy and quite open. Well, the biggest difference in today's students who are doing English, creative writing, thinking about becoming writers, is that within a university they're able to study creative writing. When I was uh, a student, creative writing wasn't really something that was taught in universities. In, in American universities, yeah, but not in British universities. So, first of all, it's an incredible uh, privilege, I think, to be in a university where they encourage creative arts and they encourage students to be creative. Uh, that probably contributes to why they seem a lot more level-headed and a lot more realistic about the possible career of being a writer than I was. I never met any writers at university. Um, every writer I ever encountered was dead, you know, <laughs> and was a writer who'd written a book who I was never going to meet. So I didn't know who wrote books. I never thought that you'd ever meet a writer or let alone have a conversation with them. So they seem much, the students uh, here seem not only to be quite realistic about what it means to be a writer through having encountered writers, but they also seem to be quite realistic about what a degree in the humanities today might lead on to. They're not thinking as idealistically as I did that you're going to become this person in an ivory tower and write your books and maybe one day become famous. I think they're much more pragmatic than I was. Listening to my work read in six different languages um, was quite humbling actually. I mean, it, well, two things struck me. First of all, it just reminds you that we're kind of quite privileged and quite complacent about having the English language. You know, it's a very powerful language. It's the most globally potent language in many ways, perhaps Chinese, but certainly we assume that English um, is a language that carries a lot of authority. And so listening to people reading in different languages reminds you that actually your reach is actually quite globally limited if you've only got English. And so that was a, a humbling experience listening to the work in six languages. It also was, was quite, quite eye-opening thinking that a university teaches Japanese, Greek, um, Spanish, French, German, etc., etc., Polish. Because my understanding of language teaching in universities was always, well, you'll, you know, you'll be offered French and German because those are the traditional close languages, maybe Spanish, but that was it. You know, um, so to, to, to actually be in a university that offers these other more exotic languages, you know, the Japanese, Arabic, Greek, um, that was quite eye-opening because that, that's not really my experience of university language teaching.